Okay, so we're back, and uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to pick up from the last video, which was creating these two data sources. Uh, we identified that um, we're starting to see some repetition of code here, and this would be a good opportunity to probably abstract these uh, these operations here into uh, in order to simplify when we go to make more of these data sources. We don't have to duplicate all this code. So. Um, I kind of did a little bit of work in the background just to see, uh, just to make sure that I was on the right track here. So we have a couple common components here. Um, for query sources, um, basically the we have an input and we have an output, right? So either you give me an int and I return you a list, or you give me an ID, another int and I return you a single ID, but there's an input and an output. A non-query source, like this insert here, um, has definitely has an input, but doesn't necessarily have uh, an output that's very useful. So, like this one has this one in particular has an employee ID, but we might not even want to use that. So, um, this could be void, or the int could be you know what gets returned from the execute non query here, um, or it can even return a boolean that just says yes, it it worked, right? So, but here's what we're gonna do. Go ahead and pin that up. I'm gonna come into my data. Uh, my data source layer here, and I am going to create a base class for um, all the stuff we're about to do. So we'll call this uh, non-query uh, data. We call it data source base non-query. Uh, we'll just say non-query data source. Okay, so here's our non-query data source. This is going to be the base class for for performing uh, non-queries. Okay, so but you're going to want to bear with me. This is going to get a little bit complicated because there may or may not be some generics involved. There will be some generics involved. Okay. So this is going to be an abstract class. We don't want anybody necessarily knowing these up by themselves. Okay. Now, what we had before is we had a definite execute, right? So, so every data source has an execute. So we're going to go ahead and create that here. Okay. Now, the issue is sometimes we have input, sometimes we don't. Okay, and then sometimes we know what the um, output's going to be. Um, in this case, non-query source, our output's not really going to be anything, right? So what we'll do is we are going to make our output set for a non-query source. We're going to go ahead and make that a SQL parameter uh, collection, and that way, because um, if you look back to what we did over here, is in our non-query. When we got our result back, we, we wanted that employee ID, and then we returned this. But this is kind of, you know, looking at this, coming in from the outside, I don't know what this int is supposed to be, and I could put that in, in the notes, but, um, you know, what if I wanted a different, you know, what if I wanted to get some more stuff out of that? So let's just, let's just go ahead and return that whole collection um, as part of the non-query execute, okay? So that's what we do. Now we don't know what our input's going to be though, because it could be different for every source. What if it's an employee thing? What if it's a department thing? What if it's like an object? We don't know. Um, so what we can do is we can we can use generics. Um, so if you don't know what generics are, you might want to go out and do some study on that, because that's really out of scope of of uh, this. And I did make some assumptions that the viewer uh, has a firm understanding of the language itself. So I'm just going to go ahead and press ahead, and I'll I'll try to talk through a little bit of it, but I'm not going to get too deep. So essentially, what I need for non-query is I need to know what the input is at uh, compile time. So I'm going to put a placeholder here called t input, and what that's going to do is that is going to um, this can work as a type, a type that doesn't exist yet because we don't know what it's going to be. Whoever implements this base class is going to have to decide what that is, and we'll show what that is later. Now this execute needs that input. So again, we have a placeholder for that input type, right? So I can say input like this, and this input type will be equal to whatever the implementer, the implementing class, uh, designates here, right? So if I say employee data here, then this will be employee data. If I say, you know, whatever do hinky here, then this was equivalent to whatever do hinky here. So we'll continue on. Now. One of the other things that we had to do is we needed to know what the connection string is, right? We needed to know what the command text is. Um, but we want to build this base class so that uh, 
we don't want to hard code the command text into the base class. We want the implementing class to be able to set that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a constructor. And this constructor, that needs to be protected, um, this constructor, what it will do is I'm going to go ahead and take in the command text as a parameter. And I'm going to take in the connection string optionally. So I'll say equals null. And since it's optional, I need something to fall back on. So we had we set our database uh, string uh, earlier in our application constants, and I'm just going to assume that they don't give us any string, then they want the default, which is what we set up. So what I'll say, um, I need to set these internally. So I'm going to say private read only, oops, read only string connection string, and then we'll say private read only string. Um, command text. I forgot the, my own naming conventions here. So let's say, hey, connection or uh, command text. Your command text is going to be whatever this guy gives me. Okay, and we'll go over here and we'll say, hey, connection string, uh, we want you to set you equal to uh, this connection string that was given to us, unless you're unless you're null. So we'll use this coalesce uh, operator here. Now, if you're null, then I want you to default to this guy right here, which is what we've been using up until this point. Cool. So we have a we have a fallback. So what that gives us is now when we actually implement this class, we don't have to feed both parameters in. We could just feed this one in. But if the connection string is different, then we can we can feed it in um, optionally as well, and it'll use that if you give it one. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and do all of our connection stuff over here in our execute method again, right? So let's take a look. So say we'll say using where con, uh, con is going to be the connection object, and the connection string we have it internally now. It's a private field, so we'll, we'll go ahead and use that. And then we have var command equals SQL command, and we'll use our command text because that's not optional. The implementer has to give us that, and then we use the connection object. Starting to look familiar, right? It's all all this junk that we had to put in there. Okay. So then over here we want to make sure that our command knows that and this in particular is going to be um, for stored procedures only. Now you can make this a little bit more robust by putting another op optional uh, uh, argument here. So just for the sake of thought, well, let's go ahead and do that. We'll say private read only command type um, command type and then we'll set that and we'll say command type and we'll have that defaulted to uh, oops what's going on here oops command type defaulted to stored procedure. So if you don't give us anything, we'll assume stored procedure. So then we could take this out and we'll say, um, oops, use our instance variable of command type, right? So we've got to make sure that we set this uh, command type to command type and boom, there you go. So what are we missing here? This connection, I accidentally put command text this is supposed to be connection string. There we go. Now we're all sorted. Okay, so here's the other thing. Here's the other trick. Over here, you'll notice that we, we did all this work for loading in the parameters, but if we want to be able to reuse this class, how do we know what the par those parameters are going to be? How do, how do we set that? That's, that's a little awkward. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either, um, you know, create a in the base class here, you can create like a, a collection, a parameters collection here that you can load from um, from the implementing class. But we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to go ahead and and make an assumption here that every single non-query data source has to have a parameter list. So we're going to say protected. We're going to create an abstract method that has to return an array of SQL parameters and we'll call this get parameters and this will also be of the same type as the input right so we can do this again we can say input input and then that's it this is just a method signature oops I screwed that up 
there you go, just a method signature, right? So this says that anybody who, who derives from this class has to implement this thing that takes your input and outputs, you know, spits out a SQL parameter. So what this is going to end up doing is you've noticed here, we used our input parameter to fill this request object the entire time, or this parameter collection the entire time. And this right here is this, this guy here. Okay, so we're basically going to say, well, just go ahead and uh, and just make a method that does it for us. So essentially, what this would be doing, the equivalent to that, is what if we were to take out, um, let's take out all of this stuff, right? And let's 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 create that method, just just so we know what we're, what we're doing here. We'll say public SQL parameter returns an array called get parameters and it takes in a employee data called input and it returns SQL parameters okay so now what we can do is let's just be lazy and take all this stuff uh, we can say return new array of stuff right but these have to be SQL parameters so we're gonna go ahead and grab this guy right and this guy this guy here and these three guys here see so essentially what I'm doing is I'm I am demonstrating single responsibility in that the loading of these parameters might not should be in the same method that does all this other stuff, right? So what I'm doing is I'm creating a, its own method that just builds the parameter list out of our input. So now I can get rid of this and I can say from parameters, instead of add, I can say add range and then I can call the get parameters method and pass in my input. So now what this does is this calls this this um, this method over here. It builds me my list and loads it in as a whole instead of going one by one out here. So I kind of cleaned up my code. So knowing that, that's that's essentially what I'm doing here is I'm saying that you have to have this, and here's why. Because now I can say because you have to have this, I I can say parameters add range the same way, say get parameters, and then give you my input. See, we're, we're being totally generic here, too, because we don't even know what our input's going to be. We're just saying, hey, you have, to, you have to implement this method, right? And if you implement this method, then I know what the contract's going to be, and I could just call that contract and add that range. Kind of neat, huh? Okay, so now we have that loaded up. Now we need to tell the connection to open. Right, so now our connection to the database is opened, and then we're gonna say, um, we're gonna say, go ahead and execute that non-query, bang, and it's whatever you gave it. It's just gonna run that non-query against the database. But we need some sort of return, right? We wanted, we we decided we wanted to do this SQL parameter collection. So we'll say if this equals zero, like we like we did before, we're gonna go ahead and throw a new. Uh, application exception and say uh, non query failed just like we did earlier but if it didn't fail we're gonna go ahead and return that that SQL uh, that uh, parameter collection so and the only thing that we need to do to do that is say return com parameters and then we're done cool huh so now what we can do now that we we've implemented this class called non query data source we can come back over here and see this insert employee data source that we did before we can say non query data source of type employee data right so now we just have to we have to go through an honor we have to clean some of this up so now we don't need we don't need execute that's why it's giving you saying hey man i've i've already got this execute what are you doing so we'll say okay we don't need that now this guy says that oh you need what is this going to do? Hides abstract method it's equal parameter. That's because we didn't override it. There we go. And this needs to be private because it's protected in the base. What's going on? Cannot change access right. Oh, I guess. Wow. Holy cow. I'm just butterfingers. Okay. Protected. 
there. Stop complaining. Now this is this is complaining because our base class doesn't have a default constructor, and the reason it doesn't have a default constructor is we're 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 enforcing required parameters um, by not providing a default constructor. So what we'll say here, we'll make a constructor, and then we will call the base, and the base requires that we give it command text, connection string, all all that good stuff, right? So insert employee. Uh, our command string, right, if we remember from before, is USP employee insert. And con uh, the command type and connection strings are optional. It defaults to stored procedure and then our default command string, right? So we'll just leave those blank. And then that's it. We're done with that. And we've already implemented this class. So now all we have to do is from any other class, we can actually say, okay, let's say, like void test, just so we can. Oops. Do, do, do public class uh, void test public void test, just so we can s see how this works, right? Um, tester. So now what we would do is we would say, here's our source. It goes new insert employee source, and then we can actually say. Um, we could say source, and then, uh, uh-oh, where is our execute? Uh, execute is protected, and it's not supposed to be, so this is supposed to be public. There we go. So now we could say source. Here's our execute. It needs uh, employee data, so we could just say here, have some employee data. And bam, so when you call, now when you new this up, it will initialize all this junk. And then you call um, you call that execute. Oh, where do we go? You call that execute, and it'll just, it'll take care of everything for you. And look how clean this class is now. It's super simple. Okay, so now here's where things get tricky. A little bit tricky. So now we need to do the actual query source too. But there's two different types of queries, as far as I'm concerned. There's a query that returns a collection, and a query that returns a single um, a single record. Um, so there's a couple tricks you can do, but for the sake of simplicity and not getting too confused, I'm going to do a, a separate base class for each one. Right. So this is our non-query. Um, this is our non-query data source base. Right. So in here, and we'll separate these later. But I'll go ahead and do another one. We'll say I call it class uh, query data source. And actually, let's simplify these names. We'll just call this query source. Right, and then this. Uh, oops, where's my F2 here? Uh, this is non-query source like that. And then, well, we just won't mess with that. And we'll call this one's a query source. Okay, so let's let's assume it's going to need some of the same basic things. So it's going to need um, connection string. It's going to need uh, command text. Right, we're gonna need a uh, protected uh, constructor, so we'll say query source, which sets all that stuff, right? So we're gonna need the command text is not optional, and the connection string is, and we just for consistency's sake, we'll say command type is also optional. Defaults to sort of procedure, and then we do all our normal stuff, which is you know set the set the command text. Um, we do connection string equals connection string unless it's null, in which case we use our default, right? And then uh, oops, we forgot the command type. So private read only command type. Boom. Okay, there we go. So now, now we're back to our uh, our uh, execute. So again, there's there's query sources that can return a list and query sources that return a single record. So this one we just called query source. But let's be more specific. Let's say this is going to be a query collection source. So we're we're gonna this is the one that returns multiple results every time. Okay. So now we know a couple things. 
but we also don't know a couple things. So we need our execute, right? So we'll say public something, um, we'll say get list. Yeah. We'll say get list result, right? And we don't know what our input's going to be again. Um, input. So we have two problems here. A, we don't know what our input's going to be, and we're not sure what our output's going to be. So we're, we're back to doing generics again. So let's, let's do this. We'll, we'll give two generic parameters this time. We'll say type t input and type t output. Again, these are just placeholders, right? So now we can replace this with t input. And our return, uh, since this returns a list, we're going to make sure that we return an i, oops, that's not it. I enumerable of t output, right? So our in, our we don't know what this base is going to be, but we do know it needs to return a list because this is a get list result, right? So we're going to say return me a collection of this. Okay, cool. So now we're back to our normal stuff. Um, but before we get into that, there's a couple things we will need in, in every case. Uh, same thing as before. We need them to implement the the parameter dealy, right? Get parameters. And this takes of type T input. And you implement your own. Um, okay. We, we'll just go back here and we'll get to the next part. <clears throat> So this is all the same stuff. So we say using uh, connection equals new SQL connection, right? And this will be our connection string. And then we do it again and we say var, here's my command, new SQL command, which takes our command text and our connection object, right? And then um, we do our parameters. So we say com parameters add range and then we'll call our abstract method and feed it our input. So now we have our parameters. Cool. So then we say connection, open up the connection. And now we're assuming that our our procedure is going to send us back a uh, list. Uh oh we forgot something here. Command type. I set this one here. Okay, so forgot to set our command type. So we say Command type equals that guy. Okay. Anyway, back to where we were. So we're assuming that our our server procedures is going to send us back a collection of results. So we got to do that thing that we talked about earlier over here, where we do the whole thing where we iterate through it. Well, we need to do the same thing over here now. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll say using the reader, we will say, hey, command, go ahead and execute the reader, and then we need to uh, go through each one and read it. So remember before, if we if we look back over here, we had to create, we need to create this empty list uh, so that we can uh, collect all the results, right? So let's go ahead and do that again. Let's we'll say results equals new list, oops, new list of what? New list, oh gosh, new list of what? Oh, new list of output, gotcha, T output. Guess what, you can use that there too. Fancy, right? Okay, so now, the, each record that gets returned from the database is basically going to be um, one instance of our uh, employee data in this particular example, right? So we're going to query uh, this guy, but not knowing what it is, we we need to know how, well. How do you read it? How, how do you read it out? You know what this is list of unknown at this time. How do I read it out? Well, that's what that, that's what this kind of does, where you don't know. But we're missing something. We're, we need instructions on how to read the data set. So we'll go ahead and create that now. We'll say that, hey, we need you to, add, to implement your own um, method that knows how to read this object. So t output is what we're expecting. So we're going to say uh, get from reader. And remember, these are all data records. The reader is a data record. So now that's abstract. We, we're, we're just saying, hey, you gotta you gotta write your own instructions on how to read that. All right. So assuming that this is this exists, now we can call it. So over here, we do our our deal right over here again, and we'll say while reader can read, go ahead and add to our result 
whatever you get out of get from reader using this reader. So for each iteration, it's going to take this guy, send it into this method, which calls whatever the implementing class has written. Huh, okay. And then once we're done with that, we can go ahead and return the result. Done. That's for the collection. Okay, so let's go back here and refactor this to use it. Okay, so we're missing a couple things. But let's just go ahead and inherit from oops, not non query source. We want uh, query collection source, right? And the input is going to be it's it's nothing. There is no input. Well what do we do? I think we'll just say object <laughs> um, in this particular case because we don't have we don't have uh, an input. So, but our output is definitely going to be of type uh, employee data. Okay, so now it's yelling at us. It says, "Hey, you need a base constructor." So we'll say, "Go ahead and create a constructor for this that calls the base class and feeds in that command text." And that command text is still. MOA, still over here. So we'll go ahead and just steal that, plug it right in there. And now our construct our constructor is happy. But this is saying that we're missing some stuff. So let's just go ahead um, and implement what's what's missing. So what it what it was complaining about is it doesn't we didn't implement these two abstract methods yet, but but now we're going to. So first thing we'll do is the get from reader, since that's the last thing that we talked about and Basically, this method is going to replace all of this right here. So if we say while read, go ahead and build this employee. Well, all we're going to do is we're going to take that, we're going to remove it, and we're going to plug it right in here. And then we're going to return that employee. Huh. That was easy. So now we can replace this. Actually, we can't. We don't have to replace this with anything because we've already replaced all of this. Huh. Execute. We don't even need execute anymore. Let's just get rid of this whole thing. But what we do need is the parameters. And we remember this particular method doesn't have parameters, which is why I put object just to satisfy the contract. But we're not going to actually do anything with it. So we'll just return a new list of, well, we can actually even, it suggests just return that. Well, no, we need the size for that. So we'll say return new list of SQL parameter and just make sure it's an array that's it because we're not even using it right cool so that's it that's the whole thing so now when you actually go to call this uh, this query source it will run everything that we did here in the background and basically we've abstracted this now we can implement every time we do our own our, our own data sources all we have to do is call this again okay so I'm going to use resharper to just pull this out make sure it's in its own file um, so we're now we're, we're, we're still missing one. We have a non-query source and we have a query collection source. Now we need a query single. And I assure you it is the same thing. So we'll say query single source it is the same stuff. Except when your data source knows, when you know it's only going to return one, you'll use this one. So it's the same deal. Uh, we need t input. We need t output. Um, and then we can actually go, where do we go, reuse some of this. I can actually go through here and copy a lot of this. So let's just go ahead and copy the properties and the constructor. And what we'll do is import the types and then obviously we need to import or uh, update the name of that constructor and all that's the same, right? Uh, query collection get list result. Now this is mostly the same, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this. Put that in here. Import the types that I need. Okay. Um, and then also, to be perfectly honest, we're still going to need these two, so we'll go ahead and copy those in as well. Um, and we need to make this an app. Oops. We need to make this an abstract class. Here we go. So now the, th the thing is, is we're not getting a list anymore, we're getting single. So we need to change this from I enumerable of T output just to T output. And it's not get list anymore, it's get single. Right? Everything else is the, it, or all the, all the other uh, method signatures are the same. But now we don't have to iterate. So 
all this other stuff is going to stay the same but instead of doing this while read what we're going to do is we're going to say if read so it's not a loop anymore it's just hey if you have a record then go ahead and let's read it and we don't need this result list anymore which means we don't need that returned anymore and um, we don't have that result anymore so all we're going to do is we're just going to fire off that reader that's it and um, what we'll do here is we'll see a t output result and we'll set that result here now this is going to be funny so we're going to say null right and it doesn't like that because it's like hey I don't know if this type is a value type or a reference type you can't just go saying null because value types don't have nulls right so what we can do is we can fix this t output type by coming up here and we're gonna put a constraint on that type so we're gonna say t output or t output has to be a class right so now now it's okay because now we're telling it hey this can't be a uh, a value type. The output cannot be a value type. Now that you're kind of constraining yourself a little bit there, but trust me, it's you're it's, you're never not going to run into a problem anytime soon if you're properly designing your return types. So anyway, we set that, and then over here we'll go ahead and return result. Right, so that covers all of our paths. So we say, hey, if you have a record, then try to read that record, and if and then store it into this. Otherwise, just you're essentially returning null. So there it is. Let's go ahead and clean up our imports there. And now we have a source for, we have a query source, a non-query source, or sorry, we have a non-query source, a query collection source, and a qu query single uh, source. So we'll use these as we go to create more. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go create some more of these classes. Uh, close these sources. So we have get all employees source. So now what we have here is a very simple data source. I'm going to go ahead and use ReSharper to move this into its own file. And this is get all employees. Clean up our directives here. So our get all employees implements the query collection source, has all these instructions. That's it. That's the one data source. That's one data source. So now we have insert employee, we have get all employees. So just for the sake of showing that our awesome base classes are supremely useful, I'm going to go ahead and create another one. So we're going to go over here to data source, and I am going to create um, get, uh, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to say employee get by ID source. We need to establish a naming convention here. So actually, before we move on, let me fix this. I'm going to change this name to employee get all source. There. Okay. And this insert employee, just to follow our naming convention that we're establishing now, we're going to say employee insert. Well, we'll say create. Create source. No, let's say insert. <laughs> that way we can stay more in line with the database there. Okay. Now we're back to get by ID. So get by ID, that's a single, right? So we're not getting all employees. So that means we're going to go ahead and derive from uh, our query single source, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's say query single source and the ID is going to be an int, right? That's our input. We need the ID. And we're going to output employee data. Those, that's our inputs and our outputs. OK, now this is complaining about the constructor. Go ahead and do this, base, and it needs a stored procedure name, which was, what was it? This guy right here. So that is employee. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, no. Employee. Select by ID. That's the name of the procedure. Cool. Now it's complaining, hey, you need to implement these, so let's go ahead and implement them. Um, actually, let me show you what I'm doing. When you when you see these red lines, what you can do is just get in there somewhere and hit control period, and that'll bring up this, and then you just hit enter and it will implement what's missing. Okay, now it's 
doing all this junk, which I don't like. So let me get rid of that and then just add that to the using statement. There you go. So our constructor is happy. We just have to tell it how to get the parameters and how to um, read the result. So let's start with the parameters. So this method just has to return um, an array of parameters, right? So let's just say um, a new array. And this is only one parameter, right? So this um, select by ID only takes one parameter. So let's give it that one parameter. We got a new parameter. It's called at employee ID. And it's uh, of type uh, SQL database type int. And then the value is input because that's all it was. It was just a single integer. So that's that. That's a whole parameter list right there. Cool. So now, clean that up. So now it needs to know how to read, how to be able to read it from the database. So let's do it. Let's create uh, a new employee. Employee. There's new employee data. And let's go ahead and populate it. Employee first name. Well, let's start with the ID. Equals reader. And remember, we have our extension now. So we can say database2 int um, and then the name of the field is employee ID bam okay let's keep going employee first name equals redirector database to string and then the name of that field is first name employee first name is reader database to string uh, last name First name equals database two. Oh, what am I doing? I'm freaking out. Okay, so that's last name, and this is hire date. And hire date is date time. I was zoning out there. Okay, so date time. But hire date. <laughs> wow. Um, employee, and then. Um, end date because this is not an, a get active proc so we'll say um, all that end date and then we also have uh, position ID equals reader database 2 date time uh, position, position ID uh oh it's not a date time it's an int then we have the department ID, which is reader database 2, and oops, um, department ID. And then return the employee. So now it knows what to do. Because we're, we're, the, the base class is going to call this when it needs to build that object. So that's it. That's it. That's the entire, that's the entire data source because we already did all of the complicated stuff in the background. So now this is all we have to do. Um, use ReSharper to use the object initializer. There you go. That's it. So now we have uh, we have a, a sample source that returns a list, a sample source that returns a single, and a sample source that inserts, which is a non-query, uh, which would be the same for deletes and the and the like. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the video and I'm going to implement all the data sources for all the uh, the rest of the entities, which is department and position. Um, and the updates as well. So uh, I think this video should have given you enough to, to be able to implement this pattern. Now, for some of you are uh, thinking, you know, why don't you use Entity Framework? Well, this, <laughs> I don't want to have to teach you Entity Framework or, or assume that you know how to do Entity Framework. So this is just a clean pattern for using uh, ADO. And I think it's very flexible. It's very service uh, oriented in that everything has a single responsibility. Um, so I think this is really good. It's very scalable. And now we've got all these sources everywhere. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to create a facade for all of these sources um, in what's called a repository, which will simplify the use of all this stuff so that when we go to add new functionality, um, our framework is already in place. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now, and we will return uh, with repositories. See you then.